So hello, my beautiful creative friends. I hope you're well. I am really excited to be here. Uh, hello to everyone. And last week, somebody asked this question. I was experimenting with the Lindy's Magical Powders and somebody asked, can you make your own, can you use them with alcohol? Can you make your own alcohol links? I was like, oh, I've never tried that. Let me see an experiment with them. So I wanna warn you in advance that I, it's, this is all experiments that I did this week. I don't know, not everything worked out the way it should. And like, this is why I'm here to show you. So we're gonna be, we are gonna be playing. I'm gonna be playing with them and showing you and answering any questions that you have. Let me move the camera so you can see what's going on. Um, okay, so first I just wanted to show you what we did, just to recap what we did last week. We used uh, magical powders, which are the ones right here to create, use them with water to create different backgrounds. So we use them with water-based products. So first water, so we could like kind of create our own watercolors with them. Then there, um, then we saw, we use them with modeling paste. We mixed them into modeling place. We mixed them into a spray. We made our own like spray. So you can see here, we made our own like paint. And that worked really well. And the reason why I originally wanted to show you how many things you can do is because I'm part of this amazing summit. This is the Card Maker Success Summit. And I'm creating this really kind of galaxy background, uh, um, galaxy background with magicals. And it's a very interesting and very cool, very easy resist technique. And this um, actual, this is actually free. To attend, you can attend this uh, for free. So the link is at the top, it's pinned at the top. So if you want to attend this, basically, you can just register and you can attend. It's running March 7th to March, um, March 7th to March uh, 10th. And you basically, every day, they basically um, release a few of the classes mine is going to be released on march 7th so that's a day you'll get to watch it for 24 hours now if you want to there's almost like 50 at 50 um different um uh, presenters and classes on all different things of card making mine is it's not only card making i mean it's all making cards but you can use those different techniques for basically anything if you do art journaling or canvases or whatever but uh if you're a card maker this is a great event for you because it's not only free but if you do upgrade to the paid version of this which i think it's only like 40 dollars uh, you get like almost 50 of the classes right away and you also get a lot of bonuses so it's really worth it and the reason why i do these things with the magicals i really want to show you that i mean i'm doing one technique on during the summit but in reality what i really want to do is um is show you how versatile they are that's why i was using it with modeling paste and as a spray and as a watercolor just to show you that there's so much versatility but when somebody asked me whether or not they work with alcohol I was like very interested in trying, okay? So what I decided to do is I did try, I'll show you like what I, I tried yesterday, okay? These are like the three things and I'll explain to you while I'm doing it, how I did, what, what I did and how these came to be. Uh, but as I said, it's very, um, it, it, it gave me different, I don't know, explain it. It gave me different results, which I was like, unsure of what to think. I didn't know some of the some of the reasons why it worked this way, but it did. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, for the background, I'm gonna be using Yupo paper. This is a heavy white version. Uh, you can also use the translucent version. And if you don't have, you can use things like photo paper or anything smooth because with alcohol inks, usually that's what you do. So let me put these aside so I can explain to you what I did. So the first thing I actually did is I tried mixing it with alcohol. I put isopropyl alcohol into a little container like this and then added powdered, I think I used this one, which is the, uh, no, sorry, not this one. I used the, where is it? Time traveling teal, oh, oh, there it is. Okay, no, this one, which is like a teal, Tibetan poppy teal, okay? So that's the one, so I added some of it into here and thinking, oh, this is going to work. Well, whether I put enough or not of the ink, what would happen is that 
I would get a lot of this like powdered. It looks like powdery, okay? Like you can see that the little like it would that the powder did not dissolve. Um, so I I got this like really powdery thing on the top, and I didn't really. I mean, not that I don't like it, but it it, it has a lot of texture, which is not something that you get usually with alcohol inks. Um, but I realized that it wasn't fully working well. And what made me believe this is that what made me like realize this is some colors worked better than others. And that was really, really, really surprising for me. So let me explain what I mean by that. Um, I was again, really surprised by this, but I just, hold on, I'm just getting a little palette. I just realized I don't have one with me. Oops. I thought I had a palette, but they're all dirty. Okay, no, here it is. Here's one that is not so dirty. Okay, so, sorry. I just want to kind of show you what I mean. It's a little bit dirty, but okay. So what I thought is instead of like mixing a few of the um, alcohol, like bottles because i have a few bottles of it okay i put alcohol in a few of them instead of mixing them this way what i thought to do is that um what i thought to do is actually just experiment to see if they would actually mix with alcohol in general so what i did is i took a little bit of alcohol this is isopropyl alcohol and just see how would they actually mix before i would actually get to the um, before I would actually get to mixing them inside the bottles, okay? So for example, I took a paintbrush and, oops, that one is a bit dirty, let me wash it. So let me show you, for example, what I did. So I took something like this foxglove fuchsia, which is a fuchsia color, okay? And I dipped it in here and I put it on the, on the, on the background. I also, you can also take, sorry, I also did this. I took some of it and just sprinkle it on the background, okay? So that was a little bit of the fuchsia color. And then I took the alcohol, oops, okay, that mixed. And as you can see, it mixes really well with the alcohol. You can also take, this is just pure alcohol in the bottle and I just used it here. Now, my experiments led me to believe, and I know this from other things, that, for example, things like Ranger alcohol inks, they have resin inside of them, something inside of them that binds them. So that's the only drawback that these, although mix really nicely with the alcohol, they don't have any binding agent. And I'll show you why is that important afterwards, okay? So one of the things I discovered was here, you see, I can make my own alcohol ink like this. Um, but one of the things I discovered is that fuchsia, all the fuchsia like colors, okay, fuchsia, magenta, all of them mixed really well with alcohol. So look at this. When I actually use my heat tool, I can move it and create those really cool effects. I had like less of it, like less of it kind of creating that really um powdery effect some of it stays but most of it mixed and as you can see when i dry it it really gets that alcohol ink effect so fuchsia worked really really well what surprised me was blue any blue that i tried did not work well i could not get it to work and I'm gonna try again because I honestly don't know why that happened. Teal worked, but somehow blue did not work, which was really, really weird. So let me just, you know what? I'm gonna do this this way. I'm gonna add some alcohol here. So there's different ways of playing, right? So, oh, actually there it works a little bit. Oh, now it works, funny enough. It did not work yesterday. So I don't know if it's the type of blue that I used or what. Okay, no, there it is. It actually is working now. But I think the more powder I use, the more black it would become. So maybe it depends on what blue I use. 
Okay, that's what I was saying. I think it wasn't blending. I think that's where my issue was that the blue did not blend properly. And if I added too much, it became like really dark. So maybe the key is to just adding very little of it. Okay. Now I try to like, for example, add little drops on top of dry alcohol ink, which is how you get those really cool effects. And it doesn't really do the same effect that you get when you actually add um, alcohol ink. I think there must be something in the alcohol inks, like at least the Ranger ones that resists alcohol. So that way you can create those really cool effects. But I like that I could use this if I want to, okay? So that's what's nice about it. Um, so the experiment was this. But as you can see, the powder, I see I added just as much of the fuchsia color as I added of the blue color. However, the blue color is not mixing as well. I don't know what it was. I tried, but the blue color did not mix as well. I think it worked better when I added a little bit of it, but when I started adding a lot, maybe you have to really work at it, okay? But for example, I know that if I added something like purple this is uh i think it's called purple popsicle or something no uh, something yeah purple popsicle purple did work and i i think i mixed it a little bit with this so when i mixed it the two colors together and added alcohol ink i mean alcohol isopropyl alcohol it did work okay so that may lead me to believe that um that I could mix the colors, okay? And you could, as I said, you could, you could mix it with alcohol the way I'm doing here. However, this is um, like, this is just, it was just kind of experimenting. I wasn't sure what to do with this and I was just really trying things. So again, I'm going to maybe like add more, more up, maybe I'll add a lot of it on, see what happens. I just want to kind of like, try and experiment with things to see where I can go with this. And um, as you can see again, like I'm saying, is like the fuchsia color mixed way nicer and less powdery than the than the blue. And I really like I like that effect. I like the fuchsia effect much more, which led me to think that maybe I could try and mix some of the alcohol with fuchsia inside a bottle and whether or not it would work okay so there i am i i dried it and i'm curious to know if any of you have tried to make your own alcohol inks and what did you use um i can feel you see like i can feel the powder inside on top so i feel like it's not um it's not it's not permanent and i thought well how could i seal it for example i was trying to think of sealing it and I actually attempted it with uh, what I would use before, which is the which is the uh, distressed microglaze, but it did not work, okay? And I'll tell you why it is. So this one that I did here, you can see that it's very light in color. It is actually me trying to like clean up the, I was trying to clean up the, the powder. And basically what it does is that it removes some of the color. So some of it stays, but most of it, it gets removed. So there we go. I can move some of the color. And so it wasn't exact. So it wasn't basically like working perfectly because I didn't like the fact that I, I could remove it. I also tried this, which is like, I'm gonna try to like kind of use some of the, um, some, a paper towel. This is a dry paper towel because I really want to kind of remove the powder. I don't want the powder, I mean, unless you want it, but it just will come on your hand. So if you're using things like, uh, like you're making this for cards, then that will not work, okay? So if you're using something dry, you can probably remove the powder from it and that will work, okay? Um, and good morning to everybody that is here. If you miss, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying uh, to attempt my, used my magical powders with alcohol to create my all alcohol ink and all my experiments because I want to show you that you can do so many things with these magical powders. Uh, I was advertising my 
card class that I'm from the summit. I put the link right there on top so you can actually see. This is a, a resist technique that I'm doing with the magical powders in a free event that is right there. So if you, um, so is, uh, so, is it, so, oh, Tiffany, what percentage is this a 99%? Is that too much? I also have a 70%. So I don't know if that makes a difference, like depending on, uh, Tiffany's uh, much more expert, she's an expert in this as well. So she might've tried it and maybe would tell me if there is a difference in the type of alcohol that I use. Uh, but if you do want to sign up for that card summit, it's free. There is the link and the and above pinned or right there on top. And you can get, you can sign up for free and basically attend these classes. Or if you want to upgrade, you get all the classes basically included in one simple price. So, um, so yeah, so now that I, the powder is gone, it's much easier, but I still, it's coming off, off my fingers. And even though I tried, as I said, the, the distress microglaze, it did not actually, um, seal it completely and this is how i experimented i started removing things to see if it would work and it actually ended up taking up off almost the whole all the ink but the effects were really cool so i still have to find something that will seal it maybe some maybe you maybe resin would probably seal it i know that tiffany has done um tiffany has done it uh before here, I'm going to share the link. Sorry, it's right above, but I'm going to share the link again, just so you know, for the card. Um, uh, there we go. So, um, so there is the link for the class. Uh, oh, Kamar varnish. There it is. So there is Tiffany's telling you what works. So yeah, so maybe a varnish, which I don't have here, and you probably would have to do it outdoors because varnish is very stinky. So, I mean... The point is that it does work with alcohol. It's just that it's you have to find the right thing to seal it. That's basically what it is. So let me continue experimenting. So just to show you another thing that I have, I have a 70% alcohol and this is like from the dollar store. And I thought this was a really cool effect. Um, when I actually sprayed it on top, look what happened. it created those really nice bubbles. So I really love how that is that happens. So anyways, so it does work in terms of creating these, these really nice effects. So let me put this aside and I'm going to attempt now because it didn't work with the green because it's very powdery, but I did find that the magenta color um, really uh, melt, not melted, sorry, dissolved really well. So I figured I might as well try it with that. I'm gonna put some alcohol in. I don't have a um, funnel, so. Uh, but I, you can see that how well the, the magenta uh, dissolves here, but I would like to try it inside the bottle as well. But I'm gonna put very little because I don't want this to, um, I don't want this to like be a huge bottle of alcohol ink because I don't know if it will work or not. I don't wanna waste too much of it, okay? So, um, so both alcohol, uh, like the alcohol worked in terms of that, but I just don't know if it will, it will mix really well with this. So let me just try this magenta color. You know, this was also tricky to do, to put this in this little bottle because I didn't have a funnel, but I managed so slowly, slowly, some of it, okay, get some miss. And I have to be patient, which is hard to be patient on a live, but it is something that I do. So, so you see, it's mixing much nicer with it. And, and the, sometimes it's hard to know how much to put in. So I'm going to first put in some of it and then, um, and then go from there and see how it goes. So I find that, I don't know what it was about the magenta color and the purples, but they mixed much better than the, than the other ones. Uh, don't know. Okay, wait, wait, where did I put my paintbrush? Oh gosh. Do you guys see my paintbrush? Okay, I'll pick a different one because I can't find it now. Okay, so let me put some of this in here. It's not to waste it since it's the same color and clean up. So now let's test it again using, using a new paper. 
Okay. And I'm really happy because I can see that is a difference. Like you, when I look at this one, the, the one that I did with the teal, you can actually see powder at the bottom, like the actual mica powder. With this one, it actually completely melted. Oh yeah, there we go, you see? Oh wow, that's so nice. So it does work with the magenta. Don't ask me, I still don't know why. <laughs> I don't know the exact reasoning, but it also looked really nice with, I'm gonna add some oranges to this. Now with the oranges, again, it got really powdery. So some of them, as I said, mix. I wouldn't know the reasoning why because I was just experimenting. I didn't do any research into chemical reactions and things like that. But um, I would assume it has to do something with the chemical reaction. But look how nice this, you see, this is the way that you alcohol ink should be. Let's, uh, let's make a new color here. I'm gonna make the color, like, let's see if I can mix it with some of that. This is a flat color, it's not, um, magical shimmery one so the magenta is the shimmery one but the one i'm using now which is um which is uh it's orange is a it's a it's a um, magic it's a flat color okay and i'm thinking that the more i mix it the more it works so that's another thing you can do you can use a palette like this and create there is an alcohol ink palette actually i have it somewhere i can bring it out and that is like would probably work better but let me just see if i could like oh there you go now you're getting now i'm getting it uh, there so i am getting some of those but you can still see the powdered the powder no matter how much i'm mixing and i've tried many different ones so if you don't mind the powdery effect and you like the way it looks because i do it does give it a lot of texture you can do that. You can also, like I did before, remove the powdery effect and then just seal it with the varnish. Um, so that works as well. So let me let me add some of this here. Um, where is this? Okay, yes. So another thing that I was able to do is I was able to kind of play with the, like almost like a paintbrush, but it wasn't like perfect. And no matter what I did, nothing was really perfect, but you could do markings for it. So for example, I went and I, I used it to mark things and that worked. So anything like that oops, could, could work for, um, as an effect. But as I said, the color that worked the best was the fuchsias and the purples. Um, I am really glad though now the blue worked because it didn't work for me earlier on, as you can see in some, uh, oh no, you can't see it here. I tried to kind of use, this is more like a teal, but it didn't really work that well. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, let's try yellow or gold. Like that's what I was trying to do before. So I have this shaker. It's, I mean, it, it, it's the same. This is an old, uh, Lindy shaker. And I thought, okay, what if I mix it on top? Oops, that's a lot. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Um, so I was thinking of that, Linda, to use hairspray. Um, I haven't tried, but I would assume that it could work. I mean, just for sealing purposes, I think it, it should work because I've tried hairspray and other things, but I haven't really tried. I actually don't have hairspray at all, so I could not test it. Maybe Tiffany has, and she, she has like used hairspray for it. Oh, the yellow looks really nice when I mix it. Oh, that's right. So it does work in the sense of actually mixing it. Um, but I just, it's it was more like the ceiling is, was my concern. Oh, that looks so pretty. Yeah, so it looks, so that's basically what it is. It's like, it's knowing it's experimenting and adding the right amount of powder to be able to get the right effect. And that's where um, I felt I had to like experiment. You can see some of it I'm putting too much, some I'm putting it too little. And that's where experimenting is. But the same way you would experiment with alcohol ink, that would be the same. And that's what I was trying to really 
emphasize with the experimenting. This is why I love experimenting, whether it was last week. I don't know if you saw that live. I will link it at the end of this video. If you saw that live where we experimented with uh, the magical powders with, with water and with putting them in modeling paste and making paints out of them. So experimenting is what gets you to really understand the properties of the element. And for example, like I said before, when I'm actually using it to create a distress, of, uh, sorry, a resist effect in these cards, I mean, you get to a chance to actually watch a finished product in this class. So if you can, like I just put the link there, just register for the free event unless you want to sign up for the for the upgrade. With the upgrade, you get like so many extra bonus things, like. I mean, so many extra bonus classes, PDFs, courses, and then you get the classes right away. So you can start watching it literally today instead of waiting for March 7th until the event actually starts. So I actually really love what happened here with the yellow. And I can feel again the the powder. But if I go and grab, as I said, I just I'm going to grab this and then lightly just like move away the powder. Oh, yes. So I just don't want to remove too much of the color. But now I think it's cool to leave the powder as well. So in this one, you can see the shimmer. You can actually see how shimmery it is. Hopefully you can see it in the video. But um, I don't mind if I can seal this, then the powder would then the powder would like look really good on it. OK, so you can see like how not only shimmery it is, but you can see the texture of the powder. So you get like an extra added bonus, which is that effect. So I don't know, I think it's cool. I want to, I will try hairspray. I don't think I want to try varnish, but um, there are so many other things. I mean, you don't have to mix these with alcohol. You could easily mix them with water on watercolor paper and then use like a, a hairspray or like the Distress Microglaze to seal them. And they create amazing backgrounds as well. But because somebody asked me about the alcohol, sorry, that if they can mix with alcohol, I had to kind of try it. Let me just, I want to just have fun again and ex use, add some more drops. And uh, my favorite is this this spray. I want to just do it again. See how it, oops, see. Okay, so that is just a, such a cool effect. There we go. So it really looks really, really nice. I don't know, I really like it. And um, I really quite like this color. So this is the one color that worked well. Um, Let's see, I have a lot of magicals. So what other color? Is there a color that you would like me to try? Please put in the chat a color that you really love. Um, trying to think. Um, I wonder about, yeah, I wonder about like teal. Oh, they have the aqua color. Yeah, I could do aqua color. But tell me if there is one that you would like me to try. I would love to try and look at this amazing effect that it has. Wow, that looks really, really nice. OK, so let me put this here. and. That just to show you what happened when I actually uh, used the um, baby wipe. This is what happened in this one. Is that I ended up to clean it. I ended up like kind of, you know what I mean, pressing it, and then, and then it created this effect. So it's a nice effect, but it removes the ink, which I do not like. So let's add some more of this. Now, I, now I'm like, okay, no, I want to add some more. Let's play some more. Um, do I have a red? So there, I don't have specifically a red. Um, I have a similar to red. Let's see what kind of things to have. We have a lot of pinks. Somehow I don't think they make red. They make pink, pink. A lot of the pink ones I have. I have like this Bordeaux, which is like a berry color. Um, and a lot of pink ones, like you see, there's pink, pink, pink. I don't think they actually make a red that I know. Maybe there is one. That, oh, no, this one is like, it's a crimson. This one is a crimson red. Yeah. So let's try that one. There it is, the crimson red. I did bring it to try. And what other colors you would like me to test? I have them here on my, on me. 
So let's try red, okay? But I'll start on, oh, these are really cool effects. I will start on a different, uh, on a different paper, just because otherwise it will get confusing. I just want to, let's seal some of these things. This is the orange, it looks really nice. This is another orange. Finding all the lids sometimes gets very confusing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to try this crimson red. Okay, so let's test it here. Sorry, this is really dirty, but it is just acrylic. I'm gonna add some of the alcohol and Let's add a little bit of the red. I want to add less than before. It's not exactly a red. It is, well, it is, I guess, a red. It's not like primary red, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, I think it's harder to make red in general. Yeah, it's not. This one looks more like a red than this one, you see? Like, it kind of looks brownish to me. I don't particularly... Uh, no, I wonder if I would mix two colors and it, if it would work. Um, green, yeah, I think green would be, a uh, green is a little bit probably easier to mix, but let's just do both. Here is like a, it's like a darker red. I wonder if I mix a little bit of, um, <clears throat> let's see, if I mixed a little bit of like a pinkish inside, will, would it work? That's the question. I just have them all here. So that's purple, maybe this one. Okay, I'll mix a little bit of pink in it just because I find that um, otherwise like it will it will not look like a lighter red. Let's, let's try and see if that works. I think it will make it more pinkish. Well, yeah, it didn't do much to it. Okay, so let's do that. So let's try it with this one and see what happens. And you want it green. So I have this mountain meadow green. I also have alien goo green. <clears throat> oh, this freaky Frankenstein green is good. So, okay, here, I have a few greens. Greens might be a little easier. Oh, no, no. Um, so I actually tried the blending solution. I didn't mix them inside. I guess I could. I didn't think of that to put it inside, right? I did bring the blending solution. When I tried just the blending solution on the thing, it didn't do anything. But that's a good point. Let's try that. I did put teal in this one. So let's try the blending solution inside this. That's what I think you mean, right? Okay. That might mix things better. Let's see. And just the only thing is I'm not a chemist. I don't know the quantities of how much to put in things. This is the teal color. Let's see if that makes a difference. I think the powder part will still stay. So this is like outer space. No, sorry. This is the Tibetan poppy teal. It's a teal color, but it kind of looks greenish. So let me just, uh, yeah, so it still gets the powdery effect. Is, I, is it making any difference? Not really. I feel like it's not really changing much in the, the like I just put the resin. Maybe it will make it more permanent, but I don't think so. I think it will just blend in. Uh, so like, as I said, I tried putting the blending solution. It didn't really do much for it which I did try to experiment with it, but not everything works, right? So as I said, the one that worked the best was the magenta. This Martian magenta worked really well. This fox looks like all the pinks colors somehow worked really well. But let's go with greens now, and I will also experiment with the red in a second as well. Um, you can still hear me well, right? Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, so I really want to um experiment with this green oh i think there's some red in this okay well i'm experimenting with red i think i didn't wash i didn't clean my paintbrush properly okay let's actually do this because i like it better when i'm actually um doing this okay there's the green and now let's add the alcohol. So this one is called Freaky Frankenstein Lime. This is from the Halloween collection, I think. So um, it's a light color. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it does. It mixes nicely with the green. That's nice. 
I wanted like um, a little bit of a darker one. So let's try, do I have any darker green? Let me just see. Oh, Lucky Shramrock Green. Let's see if this is a little bit darker. And there's also, they have a lot of greens. Oh, the Pine Olive, Olive Green. Maybe that would work, let's see. I don't think I've ever opened this one. Mm, still looks very light. So no, I think maybe we'll go for, like a lot of the green ones I think are lighter. So yeah, let's go with this one, which is a little bit, they all look like, sometimes some of them look like yellowish, right? So it's just hard to tell how things are going to work. Yeah, it's still like the similar color. I'm trying to find one that is a little bit more greenish. Maybe there's a flat color that is greenish in color. Wait, hold on. What is this one called? I have Ponderosa Pines Green, but they all look like this yellowish green. I wonder if there's a more dark, like a darker green. Let me just look to see if it comes in the, oh, this one maybe. It's called pumpkin seed. No, that looks more like a dark seed. Some of the colors, you have to kind of test them to see how they look like. So yeah, so there isn't really a darker green. So nothing I can test over here in terms of those colors. I thought there was a flat green, but I don't see it. So, so we'll have to go with what we have. Um, there's an, oh, maybe this one. There's an evergreen emerald. This looks like a darker green. Oh yes, there we go. Let's see if this works. So we're trying, I mean, you don't have to own all the colors, but um, I just tried to mention the colors. There we go, this is a darker green. So it looks really nice together with this one. I think it would be really nice to add teal with the green. So let's do that. And I love, or aqua, and this aqua one is really nice. Um, so yeah, I find that them when you mix the colors on the on them on the actual background, it looks really good. I just have to match the lids, otherwise I forget which lid goes with which. So all right, so now let's add some alcohol. Okay, it didn't mix it as much. I probably didn't put enough of the aqua color. Um, let's put some more. So sometimes I just go in and just, it almost looks green as well. It's not giving me that aqua effect. So sometimes it's just basically experimenting because some colors will be very, very like, you know, stark in color and the other ones will be very, light and blah, oh, I don't know if blah is a really nice word to say. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna bring uh, another one of my favorite, okay, this is um, uh, one of my favorite colors, which is time traveling teal. Let's see if that one works well with it because I really like it. And I'm also brought one of my other favorites It's called stormy sky, which is a dark color. So I find the darker colors really work well. Time travel teal is very light. It's not working, you see. So I can't really see it. Like the greens I can see, but when you're getting with, into the lighter colors, they're just harder to see. I, just, I wonder if that is the reason why uh, alcohol inks come in like the stronger pigmented colors in general. There we go. Okay, so this is a dark blue, almost like a black. And it's one of my favorite colors when I mix them with water, and I'll show you how it looks with water. It's basically what I used on the card right here. Like it looks stunning when you use it with water, okay? But it looks a completely different color when I'm mixing it with alcohol. So it's not the same thing. So it doesn't look exactly the same, okay? While the, the magenta and the fuchsia kind of look similar, and I can show you the two difference. You see the magenta and the fuchsia looks very similar. This one, which is this dark color over here, does not look the same. So it is a difference in, it is a different kind of experimentation. It's a little bit more difficult. I find that they're much easier to mix with water. But as I said, I wanted you to test it. And again, if you're late or uh, I don't know if you caught 
it before, these there's these cards that I'm doing for this event called the Card Maker Su Success Summit. And I'm doing this really cool resist technique with the magical powders that you can attend and you can watch for free. The link is right there. If you scroll up a little bit, you will see it. But I will put it again just to make sure. And you can just sign up for it. And uh, and um and and basically attend the classes oh i don't know what i just did while i was turned around i think some of this teal actually mixed and look how pretty it is wow once it started drying and oh i love this teal mixed with this love that look what happened here okay so let's add a little bit more of the alcohol i must have just been not paying attention and sometimes magical coincidences happen. No pun intended on the magical coincidence. So yeah, wow, okay. I really like this. So nice. The green, oh, that's really nice. See when they dry, they create this really nice effect as well. Now I wonder if as I said, like I have this, the 70% alcohol. So I want to just mix another color with it just to see how it works. Um, if it makes a difference, let's add some purple. Why not? Um, so let me add a little bit of purple here. Oh, can you see it? No, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, let me just move it a little bit. I wonder if there's a difference with using isopropyl alcohol as a like the 99% which I did or like a, a let's have a cheaper version so um, not sure but we're gonna try and as I said the purple mixes really well with it in general so purple is a good color to kind of use Ooh, it makes a really nice shimmery effect so yes so purple does work well Oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. Let's mix the purple here with uh, with uh, teal, and um, yeah, let's see. I really um, like the effects. Ooh. So as I said. If you want, if you have, if you own alcohol links, obviously just use the alcohol links. You don't need to like make your own of this unless you, there is a color specifically you want. But if you were thinking of, if you have the magicals or you've been thinking of getting the magicals, just, you know, from the last two weeks alone, I've shown you so many techniques that you can do with the magicals that really help kind of, um, show you the versatility of of how they work and really um help you kind of decide if you want a few colors or not because you can do it with water you can do it with alcohol you can mix them with paste you can basically do so many things and that's what's really cool about them i'm going to spray from the side see if see if it makes any difference um Oh, I have an idea of something. What do I, did I run out of? Yeah, I think I, I'm going to do one last experiment because why not? So this is nice. You see, I'm just kind of playing around. I bet you, you could use the dauber. I didn't think of that. It's probably sitting there. Like, you know, those alcohol link daubers, you can probably use that or any dauber for that matter. Ooh. I really like this. I didn't think I would like these colors, but I do. I want to see if this. Um, so the point is sometimes I don't know when to stop. You know, I'm kind of like, oh, should I have added more alcohol in? Should I have not? It's interesting. Okay, so I like that. Maybe like that. Okay, let it let let us let let's make it let, let it dry a little bit. Just gonna like kind of move it a little bit. Just get a few of these 
my favorite so far is these two are these two um but i do like this one as well these two are my favorite i love how that turned out really really cool and i'm going to take this little piece that i have here and i want to because i want to use what i already have on my on my palette and let's see if this works so i'm going to add a lot of it over here in like little kind of like making it a rainbow kind of color i'm just going to paint okay so that's good and i'm going to add the purple right beside it and let's see what happens if i just kind of i want to experiment and try i'm not sure if this will work or not but why not experiment okay there's this it's like this orangey color i'm just going to do four colors and the last one just because i want to use what i have here uh, these are very similar to each other but that's okay okay now let's see what happens if i um want to spray it going this way and let them turn down the page oh sorry i just realized that now what if i use something like um yes i was thinking of something like this yeah, maybe I don't know. Uh, oh, with okay, one second. Somebody asked me a question, but anyways, I don't know. I was just thinking that, but I don't really know. Um, so for this one, the nice thing about like the magical powders, somebody's asking, uh, what do I do with the leftover alcohol ink? So in with this case, I can close it. There, I have like a little like lid. I have to add this little thing to it and just close it. So I you do use like I can if you do it in a bottle you can store it, but I did I was when I was trying it here I do the same thing with um, when I use it with water. So once the alcohol dries, the same was with the water. Like sometimes I use I do the same thing. I use a palette uh, a palette with water. You can reactivate them. So for example, this one is almost dry. You can just go and add more alcohol and reactivate them. So and they never go to waste. Now the problem is like you might not have a palette to use if for the next time. So you could clean it if you don't mind wasting. But in terms of um, in terms of like uh, you don't it never goes to waste. So uh, in terms of that it happens. However, I've had my magicals for years and years, and I just wanted to tell you that all the magic, all the links to the magicals that you get ten percent off if you buy directly from. Uh, Lindy's, but if you buy from scrapbook.com or Simon Says Stamp, the link is are below, and you don't get the ten percent. But you can you probably get them if you live in the U.S. It's worth it for other places, you know. And Lindy's actually sends to all the whole world. But what I was trying to say is that if you don't mind them staying on your palette, or let's say you're going to work two days in a row, you can definitely reactivate them and work with them. So they work either way. Um, uh, they work like and reactivate either way. So this is what the problem is that I could go back, for example, here. And as long as it's not sealed, I can reactivate it. I can always reactivate the magicals. That's a the thing. They get reactivated even with water. So they, um, they, the powders are very versatile, but they're not, um, they're not permanent. They don't have a uh, something that seals them. So you need to, whether it's you're working with water or you're working with uh, alcohol, you need to seal the. Um, you need to seal them. I'm going to. So Tiffany, my friend Tiffany suggested that for when you're using them with alcohol inks, you use something like a varnish. Um, it's just really, really stinky. You could try hairspray, which is what somebody else suggested. I just don't didn't have any hairspray at home to try. So that's why I didn't. But um, yeah, so like, see this one, for example, this one I did, I did this one, I tried, tested this one yesterday. So I haven't put anything to, to I, ha I didn't put anything on it. So if I add alcohol on it, it reactivates it, okay? 
So it's the same with water. It's like they get reactivated as long as you don't seal them. With the water ones, which is what I showed you last week, like for example, when you use the water ones, I added the distress microglaze on top and that completely sealed them. It's not coming off, okay? This is what's mixed with modeling paste. This is completely permanent. It will, as long as you mix it with something that is permanent, like modeling paste, gel, medium, gesso, it will be permanent. And if you, but, and you can seal the watercolor ones with distressed microglaze. However, when I try distressed microglaze on top of the alcohol inks that I created, they did not work. It did not seal them. So you would need to use something like varnish or test the hairspray, which I would, if you want to rec like recommend you doing. So <clears throat> what I wanted to say is that like, I mean, these are the experimentations that I did. Let me just move all the, um, all these over here. So these are the alcohol ink experimentations that I did. And I think these would make some really pretty backgrounds. Okay. If you wanted to, you could probably stamp on it. You could like add things to them. Just as I said, make sure you seal them. Oh, this is the green one that I did. So I don't know if you were here before, like for those of you who are not, you know, like you get that powdery on top. So you can have something like a paper towel and just kind of remove if you want to, but I would like be careful. You see what I mean? Because it reactivates, I don't think it was fully dry. You can maybe also go like this and touch it um uh yeah so if you have them for many years like go ahead and try if you have them and you want to know some more techniques uh first you can watch that video from last week or if you want to watch specifically the resist technique that i did i used it with wax um you can sign up for the free summit or if you want to have that class for you to keep forever and many others like 45 others because it's lifetime access I think it's $40, you just sign up and then you get all of them right away. You can start watching all the different classes that they have. And these are the cards that I made with the Lindy. So it's a very cool class, but you can definitely watch it for free March 7th and, and watch other classes that whole weekend. So um, just wanted to recap. I mean, obviously, like I said, the, the, um, the fuchsia color or the magenta color was like the best one. I bet you like um, the, oh, the purple also did really well. As you can see, the oranges did well. The green actually not bad. I just saw that I mixed this. Let me just like reactivate it because I, I feel like it needs a little bit of reactivation and like, um, and playing with it. So I would, I highly recommend you testing it and trying it and seeing how it works out for you. Um, like the, like experimenting costs you nothing. Honestly, I've had these powders for years and years and they last forever. The little amount that I take to experiment with, it's worth it because I come up with so many new ideas that you wouldn't even know that existed otherwise. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this class and that it, not even a class, it's basically an experimenting idea that I had. And that I figured, you know, like that I wanted to test, especially because somebody asked last week. I cannot remember who was it that asked, but thank you so much for for suggesting it because I thought it was a good idea to try. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Let me come back to you so you can like you guys can see my face. I find that it's harder otherwise to um, see what's going on and who I am. <laughs> so. Hi, there I am. Uh, so thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate all of you for coming today. And I hope you get to experiment. If you do experiment, please tag me so I can see it. Uh, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, if you're sharing it, if you're testing it, and also share um, on uh, the Lindy's um, group on Facebook because or tag them as well if you're using their products. Again, there's 10% off for the Lindy's Magicals or any product from Lindy's. If you use my, my link below, you get 10% off your total order. And please sign up for the Card Maker Success Summit. It is really fun. There's so many techniques you're gonna learn. And, and I don't know, just, well, I hope to see you there. I'm doing a live uh, from the Card Maker Success Summit on March 7th. So I hope to see you there. Just come and join or just watch my class. Thank you so much for joining me today and have an amazing day. Bye everyone.